Here we are again recording in the Quest 3. Today we are doing some preparation and getting ready for the Lancaster to drop. No, it can't be far away and there is a rumour going around. Not heard that one. What are they saying? Oh yes. We heard it will be released just prior to the anniversary of the actual Dam Buster raid on 16th of May. Oh, so that's why we're here today to get used to some low flying? Well, you hope they will give us time to do some training runs in her. An RT? Yes. No, sorry. I was just trying to explain. Sorry? No problem. RT has a few facts about the Cardington Sheds to keep us going while we practice. That would be my pleasure, although the locals call them the Hangers. Fascinating. For some reason, these iconic buildings aren't native in the 2020 sim, but there is an add-on from flightsim.to, and I have included a link to it in the descriptions below. Can you retrieve some history about the hangars? Roger that. These historic structures were built in the 1920s for the British Airship Programme. Antique, then. Initially used for constructing airships, including the R101, a British airship that was based at Cardington. The R101 was one of the largest airships ever built. Do you have any images of that? Is she not keeping an eye on the auto queue? It took its first and last flight on October 14th, 1930, but tragically crashed in France later that day. The hangars also played a crucial role during World War II, where the manufacturing of barrage balloons and the training of their ground crew took place. It is believed that Glenn Miller, the famous wartime band leader, recorded his last radio broadcast to boost morale among the troops near here. His plane disappeared in thick fog on its flight to Paris. And unfortunately, the aircraft was never found. What are they used for now? In the 70s and 80s, the Goodyear blimp was a common sight in the skies around the hangars. The latest airship to fly from here was the Air Lander. The size of the hangars has to make an easy reference point for pilots flying VFR as they must be able to see them from over 20 miles away. Today, the hangars stand as a testament to aviation history and innovation. Over time, the hangars evolved, serving various roles, including testing innovative air technologies and film production. Over the last three decades, many musicians used the hangars for rehearsals before going on tour. These including Sir Paul McCartney, The Spice Girls, U2, Rod Stewart, One Direction, Take That, ACDC and Rihanna. Many film and TV programs have been made, including scenes for Chitty Chitty, Bang Bang and the Star Wars film franchise has used both Sheds 1 and 2 for filming. Shed 1 was used to represent the rebel base on Yavin 4 in the original 1977 film, and Shed 2 was later used for the Yavin base in the 2016 and the standalone film Rogue One. And scenes from Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises, and many TV series, including Top Gear and Squid Game, The Challenge, are just a few of the projects that have been produced there. I think I should have done that part. Do I look stupid? Well, now you mention it. I'm sure that was supposed to be rhetorical. When he was younger, he would go out and about all over the country going to flying displays and they would sleep in his motorhome. That sounds idyllic. Yes, it was very pleasant. What would they do? Spend the day watching the display flights and in the evening relax with friends around the barbie. Oh, I can just imagine a warm evening sitting with a glass of wine. The only downside was that the dishes had to be cleaned in a washing up bucket. It's bowls, actually. No, it's true. Oh, one last thing, as we have an important message from our sponsors. And the gang are here to say... Happy anniversary! I'm sure there was something else. The Oh, I know. Quick press the yellow button with an F on it. Happy, Happy anniversary! anniversary.